Hi students! Um, we've had a few weeks off of videos while I've been battling this um, laryngitis and throat illness of some type. So forgive me for my absence, but we're back now with some new videos and new lessons. Um, today I've actually got, I hope, an interesting pronunciation lesson for us, an interesting pronunciation video. Um, it's definitely going to be a fun video for you to listen to and I think it's going to be a fun video for me to make and a fun concept for me to explain and talk about. I'm also making this video with my new microphone, so let me know how it's working out, um, if it seems like it does a little bit better than my previous microphone or not. Um, I've also got a cough drop in my mouth, so just forgive me there, um, my rudeness. Okay, so let's jump into our lesson here. What we're going to talk about today and what I'm excited about talking about in this lesson is these strange pronunciations in English that don't have a word. They're wordless pronunciations, but they carry a lot of meaning. Um, they are heavily reduced pronunciations. And as always, like in the classroom, I just want to say I'm sorry for English. Okay. The first thing that I want to talk about are the sounds that people make to signify uh, positive agreement, to signify yes. So things like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh, yaha, yaha. And you hear with all three of these that the sound of the voice is going up at the end. Mm-hmm, the voice is going up. Uh-huh. The voice is going up. Yaha, the voice is going up in pitch at the end of the uh, phrase, at the end of that pronunciation piece. And the reason that it's important to think about that upward sound of the voice is that the negatives have a downward sound with the voice. Mm mm. Mm mm. Nah. -uh. Nah. -uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And so if we compare these, they're almost the same phrase. Mm-hmm, mm-mm, uh-huh, nuh-uh, uh -uh. uh-uh. They're almost the same phrases um, in opposite. So, these two of yaha and na'a, these are more commonly used by children, um, almost as an argumentative or as a debating back and forth where one child will say yes, no, yaha, na'a. Um, they're almost more playful than the mm-hmm, uh-huh, or the mm-mm, uh-uh. The next one I want to talk about is something that we practice a lot in the classroom, and so hopefully it's kind of easy for you, but maybe also, again, another um, reminder. It's this phrase of, I don't know. And of course, these three pieces being separate are so easy for us. I don't know. But then we put them together into, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know. And then it reduces even further and this, um, the D is completely gone and it becomes this, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And you hear just this sound, mm hmm, mm hmm. And I want you to think about it like a, like a pitch wave, like a sound wave of the lower sound, uh -huh, and think about it as these three distinct um, points of the sound, and listen to how my voice starts out lower, my voice goes higher, and then it comes down to finally rest in a middle position of pitch. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> Again. Sorry for English. 
This last one that I have on the list to talk about today is one that Simon reminded us of in the classroom, and actually, I didn't even think about it until Simon mentioned it. And that's this phrase of, I didn't do it, which is easy, easy to understand. I didn't do it. But then being condensed together into this, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Nuh-uh. I didn't do it. Okay. So, I know that these sound, these wordless pronunciations can be exceptionally, exceptionally difficult for us. Um, the best thing that you can do is try to learn a little bit about them, listen for them, when you're out um, talking to somebody in the community, recognize them, try to hear them before you try to think about speaking or pronouncing them. So let's go through them just one more time, these different pieces. So the sounds for yes. Remember the sounds for yes coming up at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, huh That sound going up at the end of your voice. The sounds for no. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Yeah, huh Nuh-uh. These sounds for I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Why are you asking me? Mm. And then this really crazy sound with I didn't do it, where the didn't is almost completely gone. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <coughs> All right, students. I hope you enjoyed this short little lesson. Actually, while I was researching for this concept of um, wordless pronunciations, I found a whole lot of them. So if you're interested in learning more of them or having some practice with more of them, it might be a fun um, listening and pronunciation practice for us to do in the future. Until next time, take care students. Bye.